Okay, well that's better. I've got some sound now. I really enjoyed the process of just making some keyframes. I mean, if we jump in here, I've animated this a bit more, but basically I've just uh, sketched out some keyframes and I can always go back and add more in-betweens later. But um, I, really, uh, I really like the looseness of how that feels. So my plan for today is to jump in and find another shot to keyframe in the same way. So hopefully I can just get through the entire animation. <laughs> Whether or not I even ever finish this thing, uh, at least the, uh, the framework will be there. And, and uh, the next generation can pick it up and finish it for me. Hopefully I finish the damn thing myself. <laughs> that would be ideal. What's next? Oh, it's this. Okay, this is next. I think we can do that. This should be quite a fun shot to do, really. Cool, okay, so, I'll jump in here. It's probably about time to stick on my timer. So from here to here. So maybe I'll treat this as just another, um, what's it called, a, another scene. So we'll call this layer boards, and then we'll grab a new layer on top. So I'm just going to watch this a couple times and just get the sense of how it moves. This hair could even not be on twos. <laughs> the next shot, it's kind of Vansel from the top, so it would kind of be like. Dun -dun. And so when he flicks this harpy off, what kind of pose is he in? So he's kind of like this, something like that. So that should do the trick. My hair's all going in my face. <laughs> um, so how do you draw this? This is requiring a lot of foreshortening. Something like that. He looks bulky as though. He might be too bulky. He's supposed to be kind of a scrawny man. But yeah. So we want to see his see his ass around here. So if we assume his other shoulder is like here. So then what's his wings doing? Something like that. Oh, but this leg should be down because he's just kicked. So here's the left leg, which is this one on the right side of the screen. This his left buttock. Uh, that proportion feels a bit off actually. I might just re... Actually I kind of like the way that drawing is though so 
I'll delete that and then I'll just shift shift that so maybe it would be there like that That's a good start. I'm gonna add in some extra frames here because he, because we need to get a sense of him bringing his foot back up. So I'm gonna let his flight path sort of wobble a bit before it goes into this arc. So I'm just going to check later on when he really turns into a beast. What does that look like? This image. Like that's the, that's the extent of how bad it gets. So I'm going to take this image and just stick it in, in here so that we have something to reference. It's looking pretty aggressive. Oh, hello. It's going well. Didn't see you. Didn't see you there. Barely look up. <laughs> Animate this. Altered Beast. What is this? A Capcom game or something? <laughs> the graphics look so Resident Evil-ish. <laughs> this is quite funny. Oh god. Wow, that's actually some kind of good reference material for uh man, that transformation is crazy with the eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, maybe I could take some cues from that for some uh getting some violence into the transformation. Pretty cool, thanks for showing me that. Yeah, it is something I could animate. Um, though, uh, animation is just such a time-consuming process that I always just end up wanting to animate my own thing rather than, than like, fan stuff. Because sometimes I think about animating something from Zelda because I'm a 
I'm a fan of Zelda. But then I think if I'm gonna do it, I may as well just make it something that I can like capitalize off. Maybe uh, Nintendo will hire me to direct their Ocarina of Time film once I'm finished with this. I mean, this music video I'm animating is probably gonna be like three, four minutes long, but the amount of detail I'm putting in is just means it takes forever. It's It's been a while since I've worked on it, so the kind of daunting feeling of like, I've got this massive undertaking to work on has kind of given way to just, oh yeah, I remember that I actually like drawing. I like animating, it's fun, and I like the characters. I think this animation here is probably gonna take me another year to finish. Cause it's, it's not like I'm working full time on it as well. Cause it's just me. But um, Luckily, I find that the actual process of watching the animation come together, like just doing this, and then it's like, oh yeah, I can see that that actually is a sequence that makes sense, that it's quite, it's quite rewarding as you go, so it's not just totally a self, like, masochism. There is actually, a, this, there is kind of an animatic for this. I actually, this is a Sega Saturn, I decided this girl's gonna have in her room. Oh yeah, and this is a fr <laughs> this frame, uh, I didn't know what to draw for the background yet, so I just, this is the placeholder image, so just ignore this picture. Thank you. But even him, like, this ear is totally stolen from Link from Ocarina of Time. So, even though I'm not making an Ocarina of Time movie, I'm kind of, kind of stealing it anyway. Can you get out of the sky, please? Actually, they're probably saving people's lives, so fair enough. You know, because there's something about those things you liked when you... You know, like for me, Ocarina of Time. There's something, obviously, about it when I was a kid that genuinely captured my attention. And so it's like, if, if I'm tapping into that same spirit while I'm working on, on my own thing, and that, and, you know, because it, it's coming from the same place that I, that I cared about it when I was a kid. So it's like tapping into that same circuitry or something like that. And if that is the thing that's active when you're working on, on your project, uh, and you feel it while you're working on your project, I think there's a good chance that that can translate so that when other people see it, they get a similar feeling. And of course, all the people who, who made the stuff that you like were probably in some ways trying to honor and like participate in making something like the things that they were inspired by, so. Di what's Die Laughing? I, I'm not familiar with this guy's work, but I actually, I mean, there's a lot of sort of popular culture things these days that I'm like, it's a short, check it out on YouTube. Yeah, okay, yeah, I definitely will after this. Yeah, with pop culture stuff, I, I kind of tuned out because there's so much garbage that I was just gonna say, like, it's good when people recommend stuff to me, because I, otherwise, I, <laughs> I just stay watching old stuff, you know. This is looking a bit gnarlier now. That's looking a bit aggressive, which is kind of what we want. Oh well, I appreciate you, um, appreciate you having a chat and and stuff. It's nice to to work, cause I'm, it's usually I stream and and there's like one lurker. And I, I never know who it is, but they never say anything. <laughs> so uh, it's it's cool. It's it's nice to... Because for me, streaming is just a way to keep myself slightly accountable and uh, try and make sure I'm actually doing it. Because, you know, with, with the projects that you do yourself, uh, it's not like you have a boss who, if you don't do it, they say, you know, they, they whack you and, and tell you, you got to get your head into gear. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Um, I appreciate you dropping in. So, um, have a good day. In fact, I might actually... Thanks very much. Thank you very much. I've been going at this for over an hour, so I might actually stop the stream. So, yeah, have a good day. Um, be safe out there. And uh, see you next time if you're ever around.